In the previous tutorial, we have learned how to create a neon effect for any text easily in Blender EV using the emission shader and irradiance volume and some point lights. In this tutorial, we will learn an easy technique to add a flickering effect to any such lighted material. For this tutorial, we will use this Barbecue Nation signboard that we created in the previous tutorial. If you have not watched that yet, and if you want to know how to convert a simple text field into a neon sign, like this, please watch the first part. The link is in the video description. Now, in order to create a flickering effect, we need to have two versions of this lighted object, two versions of this entire scene. One is the lighted version, or a bright version, like this signboard, and another should be very dim version, with almost no light. If we then switch between these two very quickly, dim to bright, and immediately bright to dim, it will create the illusion of a flicker. From the previous tutorial, you know that there are three different light sources in this scene. One is this text, for which we have used an emission material, creating a mesh light. It also has the bloom effect around it. Then we have these point lights in a series, which are collectively creating a green effect on the wall, just to make the lighting little more perfect. And third source is this irradiance volume, which is responsible for the indirect lighting. We have baked this irradiance volume to capture the reflections of the mesh light on the wall. To get the flickering effect, we need to control the amount of light from all these three sources. We can easily control the emission light in the materials tab by changing the strength field to a higher or lower value, and we can also animate this property between two frames. And for the point lights, we can change their intensity in the light tab, and we can animate this from dim to bright, or bright to dim. Since these lights are all connected, if you change any one, it affects all of them together. But this irradiance volume throws a challenge to us. Unlike the other light sources, it is created by this baking process, and there is no way to animate this light from frame to frame, it has to remain constant for the entire scene once you bake the light. You can either have a bright light, or a dim light, no switch between them is possible yet. So, what you need to do, for the flickering is, you need to create two different versions, one is the bright version with bright light, and then bake that light. Then create another version without any emission, with almost zero indirect lighting, so that the wall is hardly visible. So we will have two separately baked versions of this scene. Then, we will combine them in the video sequence editor, with frequent switch between the two, and develop the flickering effect. I have already created two folders on the desktop, one to store the image sequence files with normal light, and another for the set of image sequence without almost any light. So, back to Blender, we will create these two sets. Let us first create the brighter version of this scene. We need to increase the emission strength for the text material. So change this value to 4, as before. Then select the point light, and increase its power back to 5 watt. The indirect lighting, or the irradiance volume is already baked with this setup beforehand, no change needed for that. But, let us add a simple camera movement, or animation. So, go to the camera view mode. By default, we are at the start of the animation, which is our frame number one. Press N on your keyboard to bring this panel, and select camera to view. Then position the camera. You can rotate, or move it, or maybe you can zoom out little bit, to adjust the initial view, whatever you like. Once done, you need to make a keyframe here. So, select the camera, and in the object properties, Right-click on the location and insert a keyframe. Similarly for the rotation, insert a keyframe. Then, let us go to the end of the animation, which is frame number 250. Again, adjust the camera angle. This is how this small animation will end. We will zoom in slightly. This looks perfect. Now, we need to make a keyframe for this frame as well. So right-click and insert a keyframe for the location, as well as for the rotation. Just to check this, go to the first frame, and start the animation. It will look like this. Cool. I have created detailed tutorials on how to precisely control camera movement, you can check that out, if you are relatively new to Blender. Okay, so moving on to the next step, go to the Output tab in the Properties Editor. Then, scroll down here, and open the output folder. We will take the folder, with lights. And, we need to also select the file format, as still image, or PNG. 
That's all we need to change, now we are ready to start the render animation process. It will take some time. Once done, let us close this. Now we will create the dim version of this scene. First, select the point light. In the light tab, reduce its intensity to zero. Then select the text object, and go to the materials tab. We need to reduce its emission strength, but not to absolute zero. We can use a very low value like, 0.05. This is exactly what we need. Very faint, but not completely black or invisible. But, with this low emission, the irradiance volume will look completely dark, and the wall won't be visible. We don't want that. So we will increase it little bit, to 0.2. And then, we need to bake the indirect light, once again, to create a new cache for this lighting. We increased its strength to 0.2, just for the baking part. Once the baking is done, we will reduce it. So, as you can see, we get a very faint background here, exactly as we wanted. Now, while the text field is selected, go to the Materials tab once more. And reduce the emission strength further, to 0.05. So, this is how our dim scene will appear in the output. We are almost ready to render this scene. But before that, we need to change the output folder. So open the second folder, without light, and accept it. Then, start the render animation process again. Once it is complete, close this window. We can verify that in the first folder, we have the image sequence for the scene with the bright lights. And similarly in the second folder, we have the image sequence with dim effect. Perfect. Let us now start another instance of Blender. This time, we will select Video Editing. We will first add the image sequence for the dim version. So, open the folder without light. Select any one file, press A on your keyboard to select all, and add them as an image sequence in our timeline. And on top of this, we will add the other set. So go to the folder, with lights, select all the files here, and add them as another strip. This must be on top of the dim version. And by default, this brighter version should be hidden. So, just change the value of its opacity here, to zero. Okay. Now, somewhere down the line, let us say, at around frame number 40. Let us go to 40, we will create one keyframe here. So right-click, and insert a keyframe. Or you can also use the shortcut I on your keyboard. Then go to the next frame, 41. And here, change this opacity to 1, so that we get one flicker. Press I to insert a keyframe, while keeping the cursor right on this field. Or you can also use the auto key feature from here. Now, go to frame number 44, with a gap of 3. So, the flicker will last for 3 frames. Again we have to insert a keyframe here. Then go to the next frame, 45. And change this to 0, to make the brighter version invisible, so that we can see only the dim one. Now, go to frame number 55. And again press I to insert a keyframe here. Then go to 56, and change this value to 1, and insert a keyframe. Then go to frame number 58, with a gap of 2 frames in between, and create a keyframe here. Then go to the next frame, which is 59, and change the opacity back to 0, so that the screen is again dim. And insert a keyframe as well. Then go to frame number 64, with a gap of 5, and create a keyframe here. Then, go to 65, change the opacity value to 1, and keyframe it. Then go to frame number 67 with a gap of 2, and keyframe this value. Then, go to the next frame, 68, and change it back to 0, so that we get back the dim screen and insert a keyframe on this. This way, we have created some flickers by making this brighter strip visible for a fraction of second. Likewise, you can add more such flickers throughout the duration of this animation. Once everything is done, we can go to render. In the output properties, first change the frame rate to whatever you have originally used in the animation. Then select the output folder, let us save it to our desktop. And we need to change the output file format to this video type. You can make further changes, whatever you need, output quality, output screen size, or maybe encoding. Then, start the render animation. It will take some time. Once complete, just close this window. Our output file is right here, and ready to play. Awesome! We can see a nice flickering for our neon sign. 
You can use it for creating flickers in any kind of scene, by manipulating in Blender's powerful video editor. I hope you like this tutorial. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.